gardens can be a brilliant place to spot butterflies. Across the year, you might expect to see as many, let's get this, 20 different species of butterfly in your garden. But even if you're in an inner city area, 10 is entirely doable, because some of these insects in the adult flapping butterfly stage will cover quite large distances, looking for new areas to find mates and lay their eggs. If you have that sort of garden which has got lots of non-native plants in, don't worry too much, because at the adult stage, the insects are principally interested in nectar. And these non-native species from all over the world are producing that nectar. So as long as it's accessible to these butterflies, they will come to drink it. Red valerian, a very colourful plant which you can put in your garden, is great for nectar. Wild marjoram is good as well. Budley, of course, is a perennial favourite. Butterflies require wild areas in your garden. They'll, they'll, they'll take nectar from all of your colourful species for fuel, but when it comes to feeding their caterpillars, they need some of those species which you may not be quite so keen on. So, if you want tortoiseshells, peacocks, and red admirals, I'm afraid you're going to need some nettles in your garden. If you want some of the brown butterflies, such as the gatekeeper and the meadow brown, you're going to need rough grassland in your garden. So leaving a little corner is really important. And it's not just about eating the material, it's also about finding shelter. You'll notice when you look into your garden when it's raining that you won't see any butterflies. The question is, where are they? Well, many of them will snuggle up deep down in that vegetation. And if you haven't got any deep down vegetation, they're just left out in the rain and they won't prosper very much. Well, a garden is a garden. It doesn't just have to serve the insects, it has to serve you and your family too. So if you've got young children and they want to run on a lawn, why not have a rough patch where you let it grow longer and you've got longer grasses and maybe a few nettles and brambles too? Is there anything more therapeutic than picking up a caterpillar, putting it on your finger and watching it and feeling it inching along? Not much if you're four, five or six years old. There's something intrinsically fascinating about those caterpillars. So seeding an interest in natural history in your children is something that I would consider important. And if you can do it in your own garden, then that's a win-win situation. If you have a window box or a balcony, it doesn't mean that you can't attract butterflies and other insects. You know, I once did a moth camp and trapped moths in London on a balcony and it had a few pots there with plants in, things like geraniums, a bit of lavender actually, a bit of valerian as well. And we got masses of moths, huge numbers of these insects. If they are hungry and in the city, they will find these flowers. They have remarkable senses to be able to smell them when they're moving around in the day or at night. So you can make a valuable contribution to the ecology of your area by planting nectar-producing plants in those pots on your balcony. And your reward will be that the insects will come.